Um, and now to close the case for the proposition, we have Richard Bergen. Richard Bergen is the Labour MP for Leeds East and serves as the Shadow Justice Secretary and Shadow Lord C Chancellor. Thank you. Thank you very much, President. This House has no confidence in Her Majesty's Government. How can anyone have confidence in this government? Anyone apart from Donald Trump? Anyone apart from the disciples of Milton Friedman and the Chicago Boys School of Neoliberal Economists? Anybody apart from Nigel Farage, the father of a disastrous no-deal Brexit? Anyone apart from the speculators, friends of Boris Johnson and his team, who as we speak are betting against the pound to enrich themselves? If I may. You may. It's always wonderful to see a trainee Tory MP. <laughs> By the time you become an MP, the Tories will have been in opposition for a long, long time. <laughs> How can anyone have confidence in this government, apart from, for example, the regime, the royal family in Saudi Arabia, who, who can be confident that weapons were still being sold to them to wage their war in Yemen despite the courts ruling that those sales were unlawful? <laughs> the reality is that this is a government that can't be trusted to do the right thing, but certainly, as we've seen, can be trusted to do the wrong thing time and time again. We've got an unelected, entitled Prime Minister that believes he's born to rule, who is a complete opportunist. This is a person who, as we've heard, gave unlawful advice to the Queen. And millions of people across this country, whether the Labour, Tory, Lib Dem, or none of the above, will be asking themselves this question. If Boris Johnson is prepared to give unlawful advice to the Queen, then what on earth is he prepared to tell us in order to get us to vote for him? What on earth is he prepared to tell us in order to persuade us to give him the green light that he can push forward with his secret plan? And what is his secret plan? Something I think that's very illustrative is a book by Naomi Klein, The Shock Doctrine, The Rise of Disaster Capitalism. And Naomi Klein uses the term shock doctrine to describe, and I quote, the brutal tactic of using the public's disorientation following the collective shock to push through radical pro-corporate measures, often called shock therapy. Naomi Klein was right to say, and again I quote, this strategy has been the silent partner to the imposition of neoliberalism for more than 40 years, and that you declare a moment of what is sometimes called extraordinary politics, suspend some or all democratic norms, and then ram the corporate wish list through as quickly as possible. That's Boris Johnson's secret plan. That's the Trump-Johnson partnership. They want to use a no-deal Brexit as a kind of disaster capitalism to pursue a free market offensive in this country. Of course. It was actually 
Donald Trump and Donald Trump's ambassador that let the cat out of the bag. Do you remember when they said that the National Health Service itself would be up for grabs in a post-Brexit trade deal? That's what let the cat out of the bag. But it's not just Boris Johnson. But on Boris Johnson, this is a person who disgracefully has described Muslim women as letterboxes, as bank robbers, who has used the language of surrender, appeasement. These aren't mistakes. These aren't some slips of the tongue. These are part of a cynical and dangerous political strategy. A strategy that's dangerous to people, but not, of course, to Boris Johnson and Dominic Cummings. And Boris Johnson also tries to convince people that he's somehow separate to the Conservative Party in a way that Trump tries to persuade people in the United States that he's somehow separate from the Republican Party. But Boris Johnson is part and parcel of this nine years of rotten Tory government. He's part and parcel of the hostile environment, part and parcel of the go-home vans that toured estates, making people who are migrants or people who other people presume are migrants feel unwelcome in their own home. Boris Johnson is part and par parcel of universal credit and all the misery it's caused. Boris Johnson is part and parcel of a hundred 130,000 unnecessary deaths in this country linked to austerity. Whilst Boris Johnson tries to say he's separate from the Tory party, the truth is that Boris Johnson emerged from the bowels of hard-right Thatcherism. In terms of his top team as well, but it's not just Boris Johnson. We've got Priti Patel as Home Secretary, who as a senior politician was advocating the return of the death penalty because she believes it will act as a deterrent. We have as Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab, and who can forget his heartless quotes? Who can forget when Dominic Raab said, and it was chilling if you watch the video, he said, my name's Dominic Raab. I'm a Tory, I don't believe in the Human Rights Act, and I do not believe in economic and social rights. I also remember when Dominic Raab said that those who use food banks aren't people languishing in poverty. Well, the people who come to my advice sessions on a weekend who use food banks are languishing in poverty. And I think it's outrageous that this powerful man Dominic Raab belittles their suffering and their plight in such a detached way, lacking any empathy whatsoever. How can we have confidence in people like that? And I must turn as well to the person at the very top of the tree, Dominic Cummings, who said Tory MPs largely do not care about poorer people. They don't care about the NHS. If you agree with Dominic Cummings, vote for this motion tonight. I also want to turn to my own brief, briefly, uh, on justice, where you see why you should have no confidence in this heartless Conservative government. This is a Conservative government which introduced employment tribunal fees, meaning a huge decrease in the number of victims of discrimination who could take their bullying and, in many cases, racist bosses to court. They slashed legal aid meaning that single parents were left at the mercy of lousy landlords and couldn't defend their hard-won rights. But at the same time as doing this, at the same time as doing this, they delivered tax cuts to billionaires. And that shows you, and Aaron Bevan was correct when he said that socialism is the language of priorities. Conservatism and Thatcherism is also the language of priorities. And their priority is putting those at the very top first. So tonight, vote for the government if you want even more employment law deregulation. Vote for the government if you want more Americanization and privatization. Vote for this government if you want us to be reduced through the Johnson-Trump partnership into being little more than an economic and political appendage to Trump's United States of America. But vote against this government and for this motion if you believe that a better world is not only possible, but 
is fundamentally necessary. Because the crisis we're facing now can only be tackled if we get this government out and the Labour government in. To prevent rising inequality, to make sure that tackling climate change, avoiding climate catastrophe, is at the very heart of a new industrial strategy, and to achieve an independent foreign policy based upon peace, cooperation and conflict resolution. But when you vote tonight, don't just think of all of us in this room. Think of those outside this place too. Think of those outside this debating hall. Because when I speak in Parliament, or when I speak here tonight, I always think of those I represent. I always think of those who come to see me at my weekend advice surgeries. And that is, you see, where the difference between us and the Tories. And listening to Victoria earlier, it couldn't be clearer. She said that as an MP, when she was one, she saw people who showed her, they came to her surgeries, they showed her that there was a dependency culture. They came to her wanting help. Isn't it any wonder they decided to try and put her on the dole and vote her out, if that's how she treated them? Because when I meet people at my advice sessions, I don't look down on them as examples of dependency culture or people wanting help. I see them as people who are our equals, who deserve to be supported by our government and our society. I will never forget, for as long as I live, the time at one of my advice sessions where somebody who had been put into poverty because their benefits had been denied them after one of these humiliating fit uh, to work assessments showed me the scar on her wrist where she'd tried to take her own life. I'll also never forget, for as long as I live, when someone came to see me on a Friday afternoon at the Bangladeshi Centre on Roundy Road in Leeds, in tears, and told me that earlier that day, outside the Home Office in Leeds, they tried to set themselves on fire in protest against the way they'd been stuck in the immigration system, not knowing their future for years and years and years. I meet families about to lose their home. I meet young people saddled with debt from education and forced into zero-hours contracts and part-time work. Migrants exploited by unscrupulous bosses. Are these people or examples of dependency culture or are they our fellow citizens who have been failed by an amoral to be charitable, immoral to be truthful government that has ruled the roost in the last nine years? Their misery, their plight hasn't fallen from the sky. It's become as a direct result of the political and economic decisions of the powerful who used the banking crisis in a way they're going to try and use a no-deal Brexit. They use the banking crisis as a smokescreen to push through austerity, privatisation, cuts and cuts and more cuts. So, to conclude, when you cast your vote tonight, think about those kind of people who come to see me at my advice session. Think about those people who deserve so much better than the way they've been treated over the last nine years, because it's about them, it's not just about us. Migrants exploited by unscrupulous bosses, people around the world, many thousands of miles from here, across the sea, who've had to sit there, listening, waiting, as bombs were going to be dropped upon them by British governments who were just following the line of their White House foreign policy bosses. People in this country and around the world deserve so much better than that kind of approach. All of us, domestically and globally, have a moral responsibility to one another. So together, you can exercise part of that by voting. He's back. <laughs> I'm 
genuinely am, by your praise, <laughs> to labour and labour control of moral responsibility. I think nonsense with you. Every man, every man, every man, has a right and a duty to stand up for their fellow citizen. And I would say to you, it's no, you have no right to claim moral responsibility, Christian charity. That's the duty of every man, not the labour. I'm glad that you're angry. You certainly look and sound angry. <laughs> I, you should go on question time sometime. You're really good in the audience. I'm, I'm angry too. I'm angry about the suffering of people I represent. And of course I don't claim to be the only MP who does constituency advice sessions. Of course most MPs do them. But most MPs, unlike... Um, our colleague from the other side of this debate don't draw the conclusion that it's an example of dependency culture and people looking for help. And by the way, I do think with respect that you're completely out of touch with the real world. The reason being, the reason being, <laughs> do you honestly believe that in the last nine years, Things have got better for people. You sound like Dominic Raab when he said, when he said, as I quoted earlier, people who go to food banks are not the kind of people who are languishing in poverty. These are the kind of people who've got a temporary cash flow problem. Those were his words, and they damn Dominic Raab, they damn that political project, and they damn this souped-up version of factorism that people in this country are now enduring but won't have to endure for much longer. So, together, tonight, let's vote against this rotten untrustworthy government and for something that everyone in this country deserves, a better, more equal, more just society.